Today we're going to continue, right, using trig to find a missing acute angle in a right triangle. And today our focus is on the angle of depression. So last class we looked at the angle of elevation, which was looking up. The angle of depression, or theta, the unknown angle, is the angle formed by a horizontal line and a line of sight down. Okay? So it's formed by a horizontal line and the line of sight down to an object when the image of an object is located beneath the horizontal line. So here is, in the first example, we have an observer in a hot air balloon. Here is the horizontal. Okay. It is dotted line as we're created this triangle, and the line of sight is also dotted because we're looking down at this object right here. So in drawing this last segment to connect these two lines, we form a right triangle. Okay, so this is our line of sight. Okay. So if you're up in a lighthouse looking down at someone, Here's your horizontal, here's the line of sight, and then connecting the two, we have a right angle. Same with uh, being in a lighthouse looking down at a ship, okay? Here's our horizontal, here is the line of sight. Connecting the two, we have our right angle. So theta, or this angle of depression, is right here, okay? So here is theta. So let's take a look at number one. It looks like we need to draw the picture. It says a person stands at the window of a building so that his eyes are 12.6 meters above ground. An object is on the ground 58.5 meters away from the building on a line directly beneath the person. To the nearest tenth of a degree, find the angle of depression of the person's line of sight to the object on the ground. Okay, so let's draw the person who stands at the window of a building so that their eyes are 12.6 meters above the ground. That's going to be this vertical segment right here. So this distance is 12.6. An object is on the ground 58.5 meters away from the building. So here's the object. And this distance is 58 and a half meters. So now connecting the two, we have a triangle and we have a right triangle. As the building is perpendicular to the ground. To the nearest tenth of a degree, find the angle of depression. So uh, this is our line of sight. So looking down at the object. So we need to draw the horizontal as the angle of depression is formed by that horizontal line of sight. Okay, now keep in mind too that this horizontal is going to be parallel to the ground here because the ground, right, is also a horizontal segment. So we can actually move this angle of depression down here because when two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, the alternate interior angles are congruent, okay? You need to show the parallel lines in both thetas in order to get this question correct because you must have an angle of depression, which is this one. Okay, we're able to move it down here because it's a congruent angle. So now, based on this angle, we have the side opposite and adjacent, which is tangent. So tangent of theta is equal to 12.6 over 58.5. And what's nice about these angle questions, again, is we just go to the calculator now. We need to show what we're typing. So theta is equal to inverse tan of the ratio 12.6 over 58.5. So second tan. Again, I would encourage you to use that fraction bar. And this says uh, to the nearest tenth of a degree. So our angle of depression 
it's good to write out the whole decimal. So 12.1549417. So then our angle is approximately 12.2, because that 5 is going to bump that 1 up to a 2. All right, in number 2, we have a picture provided. So standing on the gallery of a lighthouse, so we're up here. A person spots a ship at an angle of depression of 20 degrees. So someone's looking down at the ship. Here's our line of sight. Okay, so angle of depression, we draw the horizontal and the angles here. So let's draw this straight down and we have our right triangle. The lighthouse is 28 meters tall. So this is 28, and it sits on the cliff 45 meters tall. So this total distance right here is going to be 73, which is the length from here to here. So this is 73 meters. What is the horizontal distance to the nearest meter between the lighthouse and the ship? So again, we're looking for this distance that's in question, but remember that's going to be congruent to this distance right here. So I'm going to call this x. So according to our angle, our angle of depression, we have the side opposite and adjacent, which is the tangent ratio. And it gave us the angle of depression, I don't know why I didn't put it in, of 20 degrees. So we have the tangent of 20 equals 73 over x. So I know the angle this time I'm finding the length of a side here in the right triangle, so I want to put this over 1 and do our cross product. So 1 times 73 is 73 equals x times the tangent of 20. Dividing by the tangent of 20 degrees, Again, I encourage you to use that fraction button and not the division symbol. 73 is in the numerator, tangent of 20 is in the denominator. And we get 200.565.8516 is equal to x. And we're rounding to the nearest meter, so that's going to be approximately 201 meters. All right, number three. From a plane flying due east at 265 meters above sea level, the angles of depression of two ships sailing due east measure 35 degrees and 25 degrees. To the nearest tenth of a meter, how far apart are the two ships? So up here is my plane. I know that the plane is 265 meters above sea level. The angles of depression of two ships also sailing due east measure 35 degrees and 25 degrees. So here is, we'll say here is ship number one. and ship number two. So again, here's sea level, or, um, yep, here's sea level. And then, so we have a 35 degree angle of depression and 25 degrees. So let's draw the line of sight looking down. Right? Here is the horizontal. Here is the line of sight to ship two. Make that point a little bigger. Okay. 
and the horizontals there. Now, to one of them, the line of sight uh, with where the plane is and looking down, we have an angle depression of 35 and 25. So which one's bigger? So if you're thinking about looking down at something, okay, or actually think about looking up at something in your, your room, wherever you are when you're watching this, and keep your, so point to it. And then, uh, so the angle is your arm formed with the, a horizontal below it, okay, so right at your armpit. And as you move closer to that object, right, the angle gets bigger. So the farther away something is, the smaller the angle it is. So this is the ship that's farther away. So this angle is going to be 25 degrees. And so we know because of the two horizontal lines, right, they're parallel. Cut by this transversal, we can also say that this is 25 degrees. And then the second angle of depression this one here to this ship, right, is 35 degrees. So using the two parallel lines cut by this transversal now, we can move that 35 degree angle right here. Okay, the plane's altitude or height is perpendicular to sea level. So we have two right triangles. We have this right triangle right here. And we have the right triangle, let's see what color haven't I used, right here. So two overlapping right triangles. We're trying to find how far apart the two ships are. So that's this distance right here. And so I'll call it uh, x. That's our unknown. Okay, well that segment is not part of a triangle. We know this segment, right? So let's call this Y. And then we also can determine from that larger triangle this segment. So let's call all the way across Z. So to find X, we're going to take Z and subtract Y. So let's first start by finding y, okay? So in this triangle right here, according to the angle, we have the side opposite and adjacent. So that's going to be the tangent ratio. Um, so that's the tangent of 35 degrees. equals 265 over y in this case. And if you remember my little trick as well, we do have to put it over 1 and do our cross products, but I did tell you that the y is always going to be that number 265 divided by the tan of 35 degrees. Okay, and I'm going to leave it exactly like that because I'm going to go to the calculator and I'm going to type in the fraction for y, 265 over the tan of 35. I'm going to leave it exact for right now. So I'm going to leave it as the trig expression so that I don't round until the very end. And then to find x, I'm sorry, not x, but z. We need z in order to find x. So z is this big triangle. So our angle in this triangle is 25. And we have the side opposite and z, which is adjacent. So that's also the tangent ratio. So it's going to be the tan of 25 degrees equals uh, 265 over z this time. So as we said, z is in the denominator, so that's going to be equal to the numerator of 265 divided by the tan of 25 degrees. And I'm going to directly substitute the trig expression for z. All right, now I'm going to open up the calculator to uh, enter that to find our decimal. 
So let's clear everything and open up the fraction key. And we've got 265 and the numerator and the tan of 25. We want to subtract uh, this time again 265 with the tangent of 35 in the denominator of this fraction. And our answer as a decimal is 189.83511. Two, one. We're running to the nearest tenth of a meter, so the final answer is going to be 189. The 8 has a 3 to the right, so it's going to stay the same, 0.8 meters. And number 4, Adam and Brian are standing some distance apart on the same side of a building that's 50 meters tall that's labeled from where Adam stands. The angle of elevation to the top of the building is 30 degrees. So here's Adam. And then where Brian stands, okay, the angle is 60 degrees. So here's Brian. What is the distance between, so this is very similar to the question above. Um, in this larger triangle, in the red, we can find that horizontal leg all the way across. Let's call that Z. And then the right triangle with the angle of 60 degrees, we can find this segment, which is Y. And again, to get X, we just take, simply take Z and subtract Y. So let's start with Adam. Okay, right here. That's this 30 degree angle. According to that 30 degree angle, we have the side opposite and Z, which is adjacent. So that's going to be the tan of 30 degrees equals 50 over Z. So again, Z is 50 over the tan of 30 degrees. And then for that 60 degree angle, where Brian's standing, so in this triangle here, we have the side opposite and adjacent again, tangent. So the tangent of 60 degrees equals 50 over y. So y is equal to 50 over the tangent of 60. So now to get that distance x, we're going to take z and subtract y. So z, the exact value or trig expression is 50 over the tan of 30. And then y is 50 over the tan of 60. So let's enter that in. So 50 over tan of 30. We're going to subtract 50 over the tan of 60. So 57.735026692. We're rounding to the nearest tenth of a meter. That three is going to leave that seven alone. So our final answer is 57.7 meters. And then last. We have Bobby holding a kite. The kite string is four feet above the ground. So I'm just going to pull the question down so we see the picture. OK, so that's this distance right here. The distance between his hand and a point directly under the kite is 105 feet. So that's this distance right here, directly under his hand to directly under the kite. If the angle of elevation, so we're looking up. So the angle of elevation here up to the kite is 65 degrees. We're going to find the height of the kite to the nearest foot. So for part A, in order to find H, now keep in mind with this right triangle right here, the angle of elevation is formed from that point right as his hands are. Okay? So if we find this distance x, 
we still have above the ground to add in this distance, which is going to match up with the 4 directly across. So to find h, we need to find x and then add 4. So to find x, we have the side opposite and adjacent, which is tangent. So if this is 105, this side of the triangle is also 105. So the tangent of 65 equals x over 105. Put that over 1, and x is going to equal 105 tan of 65. Okay, so we get the 225 point 173 But remember, if we want the height of the kite, we have to add 4. So we add 4, and our height is going to be equal to 229.1732267. And the question said to round to the nearest foot. So that one's going to keep it the same, and the answer to part A is 229 feet. Lastly, find the nearest foot, the, or how much string extends from Bobby's hand to the kite. So that's going to be this right here. I'm going to call that Y. How much string are we going to use? So uh, we don't want to find or use X that we just found, or if we can avoid it, it's great. So I'm going to use this side adjacent, which is the 105. So for part B, to find y, I'm going to do the cosine of 65 equals adjacent to hypotenuse. So y is in the denominator, so that's equal to 105 divided by the cosine of 65. So fraction key, 105 over cosine of 65. So that equals 248.451162. And it says to the nearest foot. So the answer here to finish is going to be 248 feet.